Liz McGahey, the Communications Director at Chippery Wealth. And we're going to start with our CEO, Maggie Kulik, talking a little bit about the markets. Great. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for being with us today, all of you who have joined live on the call. And a special thank you to you, Mac, um, Mac Gardner, for joining us for what will be a really cool conversation around um, you know, children and money. We often get clients ask, asking us how best to help educate their children, um, little children and older children, uh, and even, even older, older children who <laughs> sometimes <laughs> need more education. Katie's gonna be leading that conversation. I'm gonna speak just briefly about the markets uh, and then I'm gonna have to pop off because I accidentally double booked myself, but I did not want to, given all this has been going on, it seemed appropriate that I might say a couple of things. Um, so for, for starters, um, for those of you who are regular subscribers to this webinar, you'll know we've been talking about um, monetary conditions tightening, for lack of a better framework, um, for the last several months, really. Um, and what's interesting, one of the things I have been saying and others have been saying, it depends on who you listen to, uh, trying to figure out what's going on, but we've had just a perfect storm of things um, hit the markets over the last few months. Obviously, uh, record high inflation, although the pace of that increase is definitely slowing, which is good news. Um, a Fed that is having to respond to that record high inflation uh, and have been already raised interest rates 50 basis points plus and are now talking at least about another 50 basis points. So the market's repricing equities as a consequence of that, stocks as a consequence of that. Um, COVID, which started the whole, got the whole party started really. And, and if you go back to post COVID, the supply chain crunch that occurred as a consequence of that, which is persisting, um, slowing growth, very significant slowing growth in China, which is also creating issues and headwinds for the world uh, in terms of GDP growth. Uh, and then there was the whole Ukraine thing. <laughs> which I would say uh, caught the market off guard. I, as I've, I said this in a couple, a couple webinars ago, um, maybe only the Biden administration believed that Russia was gonna invade Ukraine. The market had not priced it in and certainly hadn't priced in the implications for energy and the energy constraints. And now of course the constraints on food supply, all of which we talked about back in, I don't know, probably February or March. Um, so we've had the market sell off very significantly, um, right now, for example, year to date, the NASDAQ, which is a good index for looking at growth oriented stocks is down about 25%. It's off its lows. I think it got, I think it might've, it, the lowest I tracked it was to 28% year to date. It may have gotten lower yet. The Dow, which is only 30 stocks, as you know, but it's a lot of industrials. Uh, down about 10% because there are a lot of consumer staples in that index and the S&P is down about 16%. Um, and interestingly, and this is probably the most, uh, the, probably the most optimistic signal in all of this is sentiment, bull sentiment, meaning the belief that the market is going to go up is some of the, registering some of the weakest, we have seen it in 50 years, which is interestingly, from my perspective, very good news. In other words, we're gonna to have to get to the bottom of this and wash out all of a lot of the speculation before things are gonna turn around. And 46% uh, of NASDAQ uh, stocks right now are below their 52 week high. So we're seeing, you know, when you're, when you're in a market like this, the question you're asking yourself is, well, where is the bottom? When, when will we touch bottom? Um, not that from, from the, our perspective, you know, as you know, we're long-term investors on your behalf. We're not trying to trade. Uh, we already made some moves in the market a few months ago, really adding some more um, consumer staples, some more utilities, which have held up some inflation protected bonds. We already had some, we added some more. Um, the question that's going through my mind right now, and the thing I've been talking to um, talking to some of my other colleagues who do research in this area is, 
at what point is it time to actually begin to buy longer term bonds? Um, you know, at some point, maybe we're going, maybe we're going to get to an opportunity to buy, you know, uh, a 10 year treasury that's well north of 3% or is it is is sustainably north of 3%? Maybe that's the question. Right now we're at 2.957 as of close of business yesterday, the 20 years at 3.365, the 30 years at only 3.152. So you're, you know, the whole, like, are we seeing the curve invert? Is it, you know, the, the longer term yields are, are, you know, coming down relative on the curve. Um, nothing cures high prices like high prices. So we get some, we, if we begin to get some demand destruction, we're already beginning to see some layoffs in tech, not in the big companies, frankly, that we invest in, but some of the more speculative things are washing out. Um, if we, if growth begins to, the pace of growth begins to decelerate significantly, which I think it's possible could happen even by the end of the summer, we will see the Fed pull back and we might see the top of the 10 year crest around 3% and then recede. Um, there is clearly already beginning to be some slowdown. And the question always is, you know, can the Fed engineer a soft landing? The Fed is talking about how strong uh, employment is and that that makes them believe they might be able to avoid a recession. Um, but, uh, but you know, um, uh, it, it's a, it's let's just say, as I've said before, it's very, very hard for the Federal Reserve that has basically a blunt instrument that doesn't even work that well against supply chain issues. Um, it's very hard for them to manage an economy that really needs laser surgery in terms of engineering a, a soft landing. So I would argue that it's fairly likely that um, we wind up in recession, by this time next year, rem reminding you that what that means is two years of negative GDP, two, two quarters at least of negative GDP growth. That's what a technical recession is. Um, and I'll remind you also that the market is not the economy, which we're seeing right now. The market is down, the economy looks strong. It's the, if the economy weakens and the Fed slows up, it will be good for stock prices. It just probably will. Now, one caveat, <laughs> and I'll say this and then I'll get out of the way of Katie and Max so they can talk about better things and, and more fun things and longer term things like, you know, uh, like, like our children and money. Um, the caveat is the other thing that the Fed is trying to do besides raise short term interest rates, and we'll see how successful they are longer term, is they're allowing their quote balance sheet to contract, meaning they bought a bunch of bonds, got a lot of treasuries, they got a lot of mortgage-backed securities. And as those mature, they're not buying them back, which is sucking liquidity out of the market. And when, if and when that continues, when that has happened in the past, there is a very negative correlation for the price of stocks because the stock market has come to run on this level of liquidity. So again, we'll see how far the Fed gets in terms of shrinking its balance sheet before the market really throws a tantrum. And uh, the NASDAQ down 25 isn't a tantrum. The NASDAQ down 50 is a tantrum and we're not there yet. So kind of depends on um, how aggressively they continue to pursue that policy. If in fact, market sells off very badly, housing begins to stall and we start to see layoffs, et cetera. Um, and, you know, so what am I trying to say? trying to say that um, it probably will get worse before it gets better. Um, how sharply we get to the bottom is an open question. We've gotten pretty far, pretty fast. We may see more this summer. I wouldn't be surprised if we do, but we're still not in 2008 and we're not in 2008 because what we do not have is a credit crisis. We are not looking at banks being having to be rescued. I mean, it's ugly. Bear markets are ugly. They're characterized. We know it's a bear market when the bears come for everything and they've come from for everything. There really isn't much working. Even energy is off its highs right now. Um, so I will tell you to do what I always tell you to do. Quit looking 
daily, <laughs> think long term, uh, and um, look at the names inside the portfolio and know that these companies are not going away. Um, look at the dividends they're producing and just uh, try and hang in there. So, and if you need support, moral or emotional or otherwise, you know where to reach us and we're happy to provide it. So with that, I'm going to bid you all adieu and thank you for participating Ma today. Maggie, can, can, before you leave, can I yes. just thank you for how you just so eloquently put what's going on. Though. No, seriously, I, I think, I, so for folks, that, my name is Matt Gardner. I'm a CFE, I've been in the business for years. Having someone like Maggie to be able to come on and share this and bridge what's going on out there to reality is a huge asset for those of you out here who, who you know, who, who probably been working with you forever, but it's really neat. And you mentioned something really interesting that I'd love to share. In my first book, Motivate Your Money, right? This one I wrote for big people. I would put in there, especially when it comes to investments, if someone asks you to go to the store, do you ever ask him, go to the stop sign, make a right and drive 26,400 feet? Has anyone ever said to do that? No. Not, not in my they, life, no. No, they say, go to the stop sign, make a right and drive five miles, right? Investing is long-term. So looking at it and measuring it in feet not going to help you. It's just going to give you agitation. It's going to make you sick. It's going to give you a headache. So looking at it long term is definitely the way to go. And I actually got my Series Seven back in uh, 2000, 99. So I remember the dot com bubble. Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was I started painful. in business in 2002. Yeah, yeah, that was painful. That was painful. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, uh, it, it, it was very, very beneficial. For me. Thank you, Mac. I appreciate that very much. And I'm sorry to have to leave you all, uh, but duty calls. So I'm going to pop off and I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to Katie and Mac to uh, talk to you. Thank you all. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. So I think actually... Um... I, I was just going to introduce and tell folks that um, if you uh, have a question, we definitely want questions. So if you have questions for Mac or Katie, uh, please put them in the chat and we will make sure that they get answered. So take it away, Katie. Awesome. Thanks, Liz. Mac, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I thought that I would give everybody um, a brief little intro about how I first learned about Mac. So um, the financial planning software that we use at Chicory is called eMoney, and they have a you know big forum um, every year where you have so many different amazing people. You can listen to what they have to say about the markets or financial literacy. And I saw the four money bears. And I thought this session looks amazing. I have to attend. I'm so glad I did because financial literacy is something that's always um, been a passion of mine. And I have a lot of little people in my life, nieces and nephews, and just had a son in January. And so this is something that is really very much on my mind. Um, you know, had a, a wonderful session listening to Mac. And, um, you know, I thought that this could be so beneficial for our clients who really, it, it's hard. You know, how do we talk to our kids about money? How do we teach them from a young age or, you know, kids in our lives that we care about? So uh, that's how I first learned about Mac. And we reached out to him and he graciously came on and to talk to all of us today. So Mac, thank you again. And you know, I thought we would kick it off with, um, you know, just telling everyone a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to write the Four Money Bears book. Well, thank you so much, Katie and Liz and, and Mac, everybody that, that was on here. Uh, my name is Mac Gardner. I am a certified financial planner, as I mentioned before, truly blessed to have served in the financial services industry for 20 plus years. I've I like to say 20 plus because it's getting close to having to put another number in front of there and, and, and it's just kind of weird. But um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I started my, my journey, a passion to uh, financial education. When I had my own practice in Houston, uh, I've managed several wealth management firms for several large companies and several offices. And I just found it very interesting that as I would do these financial plans, and this is for people that have significant wealth, a lot of folks that I was sitting down with didn't really have a lot of financial planning basics, financial planning knowledge. And so I found myself really being an educator 
And so my first book, I held it before, Motivate Your Money, I wrote this book for adults. Uh, I, I think advisors that can help people and, and simplify the financial planning process and this, this, this very complex world of, of wealth management, <clears throat> it, it's a great thing to be able to do that. And that's what I try to do with my first book. One of my clients, when I was in Houston, was on the board of a non-for-profit organization and said, Mac, love the Mac Nuggets, love how you broke things down. Would you be open to writing a book for children? So I said, hmm, okay, uh, like how young? And she's like, elementary school, because we had elementary school kids at the time. So in my first book, I talk about there's five steps to financial success. Plan accordingly, spend cautiously, save diligently, invest wisely, and, and give generously. And so what we did is we, we took those four functions of money and we created these four bear characters. And the whole idea is to engage young people and share with them that they have options when it comes to money. It's not just spending it. It's not just saving it. There are two other very important functions that if we can explain and express this to them early enough, they can make some really cool decisions later on in life. Absolutely. That's so cool. And, you know, obviously this is a great way to introduce the conversation from a young age with kids. Um, but other than, you know, reading this book, what can we do to teach the children in our lives about financial literacy from a young age so that they have a healthy, it's a healthy discussion and an open discussion um, from the start? So one of the, when we started doing the research on this, this, children's book. <clears throat> there are 23 states today, I think moving closer to 24, that offer any sort of financial literacy guidance education by high school. And it's typically your senior year of high school. But as we're doing research, Katie, what we found out, there's a Cambridge study recently that was done that shows that a child's connectivity with money actually starts as early as age seven, sometimes as early as age five. And the first habit that children pick up typically is the parent spending habit, right? They hear mom and dad do with money. They see when they go shopping, how they engage with their, with their finances. And so um, what we wanted to do with this book is to say, okay, if you are a parent that never got this yourself, right? What can you do? What tools can you utilize to sit down with someone in elementary school and say, hey, all right, Whenever you get $100, and I'll talk a little bit about my $100 bill challenge later, but whenever you get this money, tell me what you think you can do with it. And, and that's really how, how the conversation begins, is, is literally asking children, okay, this is money. Tell me what you think you can do with it. And, and from there, you know, once, depending on the responses they, they, they give, that's when you can pull out the Four Money Bears book uh, because that's really the story uh, that, that, that we're, we're, we're trying to express. Sure, sure. Do you want to hop into the $100 challenge? I'd now? love to, I'd love to. So here, so it, this, is, this is how the whole thing started. So I wrote, I wrote this book five, maybe six years ago. So again, I had my practice, do a lot of really great things, trying to help the community. And so I would go to uh, elementary schools to do book readings. And, you know, these, these elementary school kids, they're running all over the place and, you, you know, they're, they're jumping and talking and chatting. I'm like, how am I going to get these kids to relax? And so I keep a hundred dollar bill in my wallet. And so I said, ah, let me take this hundred dollar bill out and ask them what they would do with it. And so I took the hundred dollar bill and before anyone could answer, I said, okay, let's just level set folks. There is no answer you can give that's going to get you this hundred dollar bill. Let's just level set now. But <laughs> If I were to give you this hundred dollar bill, what would you do with it? And what do you think 90% of the responses were? Oh man, I don't know. Go to the, go to Target and get a toy. They'd buy something. Pokemon cards, candy, toys, buy, 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 buy. And then there'd be the one kid that'd be different and put their hand up. I was like, I put it in my piggy bank. I'm like, oh, I don't know if that'd be the first thing you do. But what it, it, what it became, Katie, was an actual experiment. And I've done this countless times in countless schools and what it showed us is that our kids are almost conditioned to consume at a very early age and that's the function of money that they're almost hardwired to to run to first and I talk about the three r's of our relationship with money it's, it's actually the relationship with anything so first a child realizes what money is they pick up the money they say oh I realize this is money second they recognize the function 
And so if you are a child in a household and your recognition of the function of money is only to spend and to save, the third R, which is rationalization of what you can do with it, you're, you're, you're pretty limited because all you think about is, okay, how can I spend this? How can I save this? What we're, what we're looking to do with the Full Money Bears book and the app that we're developing is to expand a child's awareness of what their options are. So now when they know, okay, when I get this hundred dollars, I could buy something, I could save something, but I, I can actually invest these conversations about investing start coming up at a very early age. And I believe in a, in, in a heart of hearts, all we are at the end of our days, our collection of stories. And so that's what we're looking to do is to get the story of the full money bears early into kids' lives so that they know they can do other things that are very powerful with the money and giving, of course, is, a, is another one. Very Absolutely. Powerful. And I know that one in particular is really, um, is really meaningful to a lot of our clients. So I love that each bear has a story and, and you're able to incorporate that with this hundred dollar challenge, bringing, bringing the kids um, and getting the same answer for so many of them. It's very, very interesting. And I think that it, it really does lead us to think, you know, how, how are they learning about money from our habits so how can we emulate and how can we mirror so they are they're learning these good habits and what they can do from from a really young age um, obviously you're very passionate about financial literacy which i love and um, and you know we touched on the school visit is there anything that you feel you know can be done to improve financial literacy in our society, specifically in public schools? Because when we talk about you know senior year of high school, that was my experience. My AP government class, my senior year, we had you know a, a week or two where we did you know twenty minute twenty minutes of learning about credit cards, and yeah. uh, I don't know how much anybody really got out of it. And it, it almost felt too, too little, too late. I'm about to go off to college. Shouldn't I, I know some of this stuff beforehand. Luckily, my parents taught me how to balance a checkbook and mm -hmm. a lot of these really good habits, but it does really fall on families. So do you have, you know, any thoughts on what can be done policy-wise to, to help improve financial literacy for, for our kids? Yeah, I, 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 how, much, how much time do we have, Katie? Because I could literally <laughs> talk about this one topic for you a long time. So, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tee it up with a story and then you know wrap it up with Finlit Tech, the company that we started a couple of years ago. So wrote this book, you know, shared it with my kid's school. We're living in Texas at the time. And Texas at that time have these teaks or curriculum requirements. And the principal looks at this book and says, Mac, this is awesome. Teachers are looking for material like this because we now have this requirement to teach financial literacy at an early age. This is great. I sent a copy of our book to 30 state school boards. The process to get a book into a public school is mind-numbingly painful. It's, it's very, very challenging. And so what we saw as we would continue to engage these elementary schools and visit these classrooms is that children are learning digitally now. Teachers are looking for platforms that are digital that they can incorporate in their classroom curriculum. And so that's how Finlit Tech actually started. We would hear from parents, Mac, I love this book. And, and to, to let the audience know, when we wrote this book, we did not expect that we would have families and folks in um, India, <laughs> South Africa, UK, Germany, France, Canada. Our book is, is, is bought globally by families across the world who are looking for tools to start this conversation. But the one thing we kept coming here from folks is, is there an app? Is there an app? Is there some sort of digital platform? And so we started Finlit Tech, which is, which is a short for financial literacy technology. And our mission really is to build a bridge between financial literacy and financial technology. The way that people are engaging their finances is changing. I can take my phone and I can invest, I can get insurance, I can get a half a million dollar mortgage just through this. And young people are learning that way as well. So we, 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 we found that it, it needs to be some sort of resource wherein technology is being utilized 
And that's why we developed the Four Money Bears Berryville as a gamified financial education resource uh, as, as the on-ramp to a child's financial education success. So, th- so the, the, the long-winded answer to your question is yes, there are resources that can come through school, can come through parents and financial institutions, which is why we're building this tool so that all of those resources can start the education process early. Yeah, and the Berryville game, folks, you got to check it out. It's very, very, very cool. Um, I think very engaging for kids. And we'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, the feedback you've received on it at Finlit Tech. And uh, also that it's ties with behavioral finance because, you know, psychologically it can be hard to deal with money. Um, So I think this is, you know, helping create a positive narrative for kids from from a young age. So would love love to hear your thoughts there. Yes. So the the when we when we published the, the Four Money Bears book, we got great reviews. If you go on Amazon right now, you could you know, people. I, we're, we're so blessed and so thankful that that folks found it to be such a great resource. They would ask the first question they would ask is Is there an app? The second question they would ask is Mac are you writing a book to teach kids about earning money? <laughs> because it's great that you taught them how to do, what, you know, a book, what to do with the money once they get it. Can you teach them about earning it? Because that'd be pretty cool. I'm trying to teach my kids the value of a dollar. And so with the Four Money Bears, Bears Berryville app slash game, what we've done is we've developed a platform that helps to engage children or adults. It's, it's seven up. So it's something, it's a farming game on both sides of the personal finance fence. And here's what we mean. In the game, the player inherits their family berry farm. So you are running a business and you've got to learn how to run that business. So that's one side of the fence. The other side of the fence is once you've got the money, we have quizzes, quests that we've developed a, a new methodology for teaching financial literacy where we teach analyze and then track the progress of the game player over time. Because what we found is that financial literacy is not just a one and done. You can't take a two week course in economics class in your senior year and all of a sudden be like, hey, you're financially literate. It's something that needs to start early and it needs to be a continual progress. And we need to be able to help folks throughout that that full spectrum. So uh, that's, that's what we're building is a tool that allows a parent to be able to have a child play a game, do some farming, learn some fun stuff, get education about finances and financial literacy, analyze how they're doing. Okay, is this a spender bear? Okay, this person's a spender bear. So we're gonna gonna have to put some quizzes and quests in here to get this person more aligned with investing and saving and some of the other functions of money. Uh, Because to your point, the behavioral finance aspect of this is, is very big. And we wanna be able to get some of these habits, behaviors and traits at an early age and get them on the right path. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And um, you folks uh, on the call, so you know, I've already told Mac and Liz this, but I, after I went to Mac's session at this forum, I bought this book for all of our nieces and nephews for Christmas. And I wrote a little note in it and, you know, told all their parents, this is really important. This is a really good tool. You guys have been asking me about this. I've gotten great feedback from all of them. And I already have a copy for my son. Um, we read at bedtime already, even though he's only 15 weeks old. You can never start too early. <laughs> start too early. Uh, so I really, I think it's so important. And this is such an amazing tool that you've created. The Berryville game, I got to tell the nieces and nephews about. JT's not old enough yet for it. But I, I mean, really, it's it's hard because people have come to us and asked, like, what can I do? What resources are out there for kids? So this is, you know, fantastic for you know young elementary school age kids. Um, from personal experience, I know my nieces and nephews have really liked the book, and it's very cool to see their connections that they start making with, with the different, uh, the different characters. beers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It's very sweet. And it's, um, it, you know, I think that what you're doing is amazing. And I, uh, I would love to talk more offline about how, uh, you know, I can get more involved in, in promoting financial literacy, um, with kids, especially, but in general, I think that, 
our entire society can absolutely benefit from from learn continuing to learn as you said it's an ongoing process for all of us yeah. so just to give the folks that are, that are uh, participating today a, a little bit more background about the book uh the the everyone said how did i come up with bears like Mac, why do you got bears and four money bears you know you could have picked any animal you could have picked you know the lions or the bulls or, you know, especially for the, uh, the, the advisors that are out there. Um, but in our home, I'm, I'm Papa Bear and my wife is Mama Bear and our three kids are baby bears. And th that's literally our nicknames. And so the book <clears throat> is the story of me and my wife. And I, I, I'll, hopefully the, uh, the, the camera can pick it up and show everybody on it because every parent knows what this is. They, they know the story of jumping in the car on the weekends with the kids in the back and taking them to, you know, Target or Walmart or whatever store, uh, you know, that you, that, that you take them to. And the first place the child runs to or your kids run to is the toy section. Just yeah. what they do. Yours is 15 months, but you're so a little young, may not, may not be, uh, be running yet, but it's, it's what, it's what they do. And we, we really, we, we literally sat down, my wife and I was like, you know what, these children literally have no clue. <laughs> what, what, what money can do. And so the story is about me, my wife and sitting down with the kids and literally asking them, like I said, if I gave you this hundred dollar bill, if, 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 what can you do with it? And typically they'll say spend and typically they say save. So it's an opportunity for a parent to look at the various functions, right? Of money, look at the pros and cons of each function of money. So spend a bear, has all kinds of neat things, but when, once all the money's gone, he can't afford anything. And then Saver Bear hoards money, and then you know Investor Bear. It 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 it, it, in, in, it introduces the concept of investing, which is very different from the concept of savings, and it's a very important differentiation because you know we haven't even talked about you know, kids that are under uh, overlooked and underserved communities and things along those lines. But if you want children to have healthy financial habits as adults. It, you, you got to start the habits early as children. And so by explaining to them, there's a difference between saving and investing and what the concept of risk is, and then explain to them why giving is important. And then at the back of the book, what we work to do is, is, is provide little worksheets that you, that a parent can sit down. And Katie, I can't tell you how many times parents have come to me and say, Mac, thank you for not making this book too kitty because you're teaching me something. I, I, I didn't know what some of these things were. And so it's helping. And at the, at the back of every book, we have, a, we have a budget where you can sit down with your kiddo and you can put an actual budget together and just have their minds in, in, in a space where they realize that all four of these bears need to work together. They need to work together to form this amazing thing called the budget. And all a budget is, is just rules for your money. Absolutely. And teaching that from a young age and how, how do I take control of my money and how do I um, give where, you know, so, to a place that means something to me? Mm -hmm. How do I also afford a toy? And how do I think about maybe when I'm 12, you know, it's just getting, getting their, their minds, the wheels turning mm -hmm. about it from, from a young age and such a, yeah, I, I love the budget worksheet. I think it's such a, such a neat tool for them. And again, I mean, this is, it, it's on families um, and their support systems at home to yeah. teach this to kids. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, Katie, I'm not sure if you were at the, the, the breakout session that I did, but for the parents out there who are looking for the right words, because I think words can be very powerful, especially when you're engaging young people about money. Um, the question came up about, you know, how do you tell your kids, you know, that, that they shouldn't buy something? And someone said, you know, well, we, 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 we just say, oh, we, we can't afford it, you know, to kind of keep them quiet. This advisor used some beautiful words. She tells her children, I choose not to spend my money this way. Wow. Not that we can't afford it. Not that it's, it's not, we choose to not spend our money this way. And, and once, you, once you give young people that power, that you have, you've got a choice mm -hmm. of where to place your, your resources and, and where to place that, the, your, your, you know, that hard earned dollar. Uh, it, it, it really, it, it does something very, very possible. I try to share that with as many parents as possible 
you know, talk to your kids. And, and when they're out doing things, a lot of times they want to spend our money, <laughs> but if they, when they do have their own money, um, uh, have them be in the mindset where we, you know, don't say we can't afford, say we choose to spend or not to spend our money this way. That's very powerful messaging. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I thought that was great. Thank you. And I want to, Mac, we do have a question. Oh, yes. Chat. Um, and I actually have a question after this one. So I, Mac, I don't know how old your kids are, but the question is, are your kids already investing? And, and if so, what are they investing in and how are they doing that? So what I love about the, the time that we are in, remember, I, I think I said earlier, or we are at the end of our days, a collection of stories, right? We just we, our kids will hear stories about investing because we're in that business. A vast majority of children will never hear those stories. So what's neat is we are living in an era and a time where a child can pick up our book, start reading, ask a question about investing and say, you know, I may not have a lot of money, mom, dad, we have five, 10, 15, 20 books, but I'd like to be able to buy Starbucks or five bucks as I affectionately call it. And the technology, that because every time you go in there, you spend at least five bucks. Um, the technology now is, is, is around where there are tools like Greenlight, which is a, a actual app that my two older children have. It's a banking app. They get a little a debit card with their faces on it. And you know we can pay them allowance, but it also allows them to invest. And it allows them to do what's called fractional investing, where they can they can literally take five bucks and we can take five bucks. So to answer your question, yes, uh, my children do invest. Uh, their UTMA accounts, UTMA accounts is really what they are um, that are that are held digitally. And and more importantly, it's 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 the tool to really help engage the conversation between the parent and the child. So if you're at a store, you want to buy five dollars worth of Nike, boop, you can actually go in there buy an inexpensive ETF, you can do that. So uh, I've already started my, my kids on their investing journey. They own a couple of things here and there and then tell them about why ETFs are important and all that fun stuff. So yes. And if they're spending all that money in Starbucks, you might as well own some of that, <laughs> some of that stuff. Thank you. My question was, so my kids are now in their 20s. I really, really wish I had had this book when they were younger. Uh, that would have been very helpful. And I just was curious if you were thinking about, especially with the app, um, doing anything for older children, middle school uh, or even high school. I don't know. Is, is that in your plans at all? Yeah. So if you see our whiteboard in the office, not, not the one that's behind here, but the, the actual real office. Um, <laughs> So we, we view the four money bears as the, the on-ramp to a child's digital financial education experience. Like you got to start somewhere. And so that's how we view the four money bears very well. Uh, you know, they start learning, understanding the basics, and we start talking. We've introduced, we've created some new characters, Banker Box Turtle, Lender Lion, Omnibus Owl, and Crypto Cat. We've got a, a huge, huge response from parents looking for guidance on cryptocurrencies and blockchain. So we've developed characters for that. Uh, and then at the other end of the, of, of, of the spectrum is uh, the Motivate Your Money book that we are developing into a multimedia financial education platform for adults and grown folk. And then everything in the middle uh, is, is gonna be coming up on board. Amazing. Do you, is there a, you know, expected time frame, even a loose one, if anybody wants to go out and look for that? Uh, sure. So uh, the books you can, you can find uh, on Amazon, the Full Money Bears book, as well as uh, Motivate Your Money. The app, it, you can actually play the demo if you go to the fullmoneybears.com, which somebody dropped in there, and you can play the demo and, 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 and go to the farm and all that fun stuff. The live game, we're looking at Q4 of this year to be out in uh, the Apple stores, to be out in Android. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's this. And then the other, the other projects that we're working on really are, are coming from financial institutions and advisors like yourself who are looking for uh, you know, fun, entertaining, engaging financial education resources to be able to say, hey, you know what, you, if you want to do this, this way, learn about this, that, and the third, take a look at this, this resource here. So that's going to be, you know, 2023, 2024. But right now our focus is to get this, um, get this, this Full Money Bears Berryville out into the world to, to, to help parents with, the, with these young yeah. kids. 
So many great things coming from Finlit Tech and Mr. Gardner. So thank you so much, Mac. Does any, if anybody else has any other questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll kick it back to Liz, but Mac, thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing. These are such important conversations and I love how passionate you are about it. You can really tell from talking to you and, you know, I just, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to to talk with all of us it means a lot no it, it, and it means a lot to me too that you all invited me to talk about this not and I wish Meg is on the phone uh, on the line too but um I've already been glowing about all the great things you're doing but not a lot of firms are taking the time to really bring resources like this other things that are um you know, I, I heard, a, I was at a conference one time, they're talking about the three M's of this business. You know, the first is, do you know me? Well, do you know money? And of course, as a financial advisory firm, you better know money. You know, the yeah. second one is, do you know me? Do you know me as a client? The third is, do you know more? What more are you bringing to the people that you're guiding and advising uh, on, on their financial life journey? And I think financial literacy is one of those, those mores that a lot of parents and grandparents are kind of like, all right, they, they're going to get this money. And, uh, you know, uh, they, I hope they don't blow it. So they're, they're looking for great resources and ways to make sure that that money that's been hard worked and, 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 and have grown over years and uh, it, it gets to that next generation, if not generations down the road. Absolutely. Well, that is something that we are trying to provide in our website and also in our meetings with clients is resources they might need for the, the bigger picture about their money life and their family life and so forth. Anything else you want to add? Uh, I will say before we sign off that uh, we did record this and um, it's going to be up on our website. Probably it'll be a couple of days before it gets up. Uh, but if you have friends you think might benefit from hearing about this, uh, I hope you will pass the link along. Uh, anything else you want to end with, Mac? Uh, again, thank you both. Thank you all for your time today. And I like to say that the financial life journey is a long one. Having a guide is going to be so, so important. And that journey continues. Great. Thank you all for being here.